I'm Dr. Bernie Omedy, the inventor of measured irrigation. This video is for anyone who uses drip irrigation and would like to reduce their water consumption. Let me start with a quick overview of the zero cost innovation. This is my drip irrigation installation and one of the drippers is positioned so that it drips water into the bucket. I turn on the tap. You can now see the water dripping into the bucket. When the water level reaches the level line, I will turn off the tap. I will start the next irrigation when the water level has fallen below the level line due to evaporation. By using a bucket in this way, you can save a lot of water because the number of litres per week emitted by each dripper is controlled by the weather. To explain precisely how the weather controls the drip irrigation, I need to introduce the concept of net evaporation, which means evaporation minus rainfall. By using a bucket in this way, the number of litres per week emitted by each dripper is directly proportional to the net evaporation rate. This is very important, so I will repeat it. The number of litres per week emitted by each dripper is directly proportional to the net evaporation rate. So when it is very hot, water evaporates from the bucket more quickly and so your garden will get more water per week. And when it rains, the water level in the bucket will rise and so you will start the next irrigation much later. I'm using a bucket and the weather to control the irrigation. It is important to realise that a computer controller or a timer cannot adjust to changes in the weather. For example, if there is an unexpected heat wave, the computer controller will continue to follow its program and ignore the heat wave. If you happen to be on holidays at the time, your garden may die. I will now discuss the zero cost innovation in greater detail. My garden is in Adelaide, where January is the hottest month of the year. According to historical data from the Bureau of Meteorology, the net evaporation in my garden in January is 243 millimetres. Using the red bucket, it can be shown that for a typical January, each dripper will emit 3.2 litres per week. Provided that all the drippers are the same, I can change to any other dripper and still have the same application rate of 3.2 litres per week in January. The application rate is independent of your choice of dripper. With this innovation, an 8 litre per hour dripper will have the same weekly application rate as a 2 litre per hour dripper. Instead of using the red bucket, what happens if I use a different container with a different surface area of evaporation? This saucepan, for example, provides an application rate of 2.5 litres per week in January. I will now show you how to select an appropriate container, also called an evaporator, for your drip irrigation installation and how to install the evaporator. Step 1. Estimate the preferred number of litres per week for each dripper for the hottest month of the year. For my garden, for example, I have chosen 6 litres per week in January. Step 2. Estimate the net evaporation in millimetres in your locality during the hottest month of the year. In Australia, you can use the Measured Irrigation Nozzle Selector tool, which can be downloaded from the Measured Irrigation website. For my garden, the net evaporation is 243 millimetres in January. Step 3. Before you can choose an appropriate evaporator, you need to calculate the required surface area of evaporation using the estimates from Step 1 and Step 2. Formula is surface area in square metres equals the number of days in the hottest month multiplied by the litres per week from Step 1 divided by the net evaporation from Step 2 divided by 7. For my garden, the required surface area is 31, the number of days in January, multiplied by 6, the required number of litres per week in January, divided by 243, the net evaporation in January, divided by 7, which equals 
0.109 square meters. Step four, select a suitable evaporator with vertical sides and with the surface area of evaporation as close as possible to the area you have just calculated. For my garden, I have chosen a green hobby box as the evaporator. Step five, you mark a level line on the inside of the evaporator, about three centimetres below the overflow level. Step six, install the evaporator in a suitable location exposed to full sun and position a single dripper so that it drips water into the evaporator during the irrigation event. Step seven, fill the evaporator with water until the water level is just below the level line. And then commence irrigation. Step 8. The water level in the evaporator falls due to evaporation. Start irrigating again when the water level is below the level line and the next irrigation is required. This cycle continues indefinitely. You now know how to use a bucket to upgrade pressurised drip irrigation to pressurised measured irrigation. So have a go and please give me your feedback. The zero cost innovation presented in this video is just one of many applications of measured irrigation. For more information about measured irrigation, go to the measured irrigation website. Here are all my contact details. Thank you.